So what do you want? To, you want to do a set an appointment or overcome an objection? Overcome an objection. Overcome an objection. Which uh, uh, which objection? I don't think this is for me. Okay, cool. What what do your friends call you? I just call me Josh. Or they don't have like a nickname for you, like 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 uh, B boy B boy I Josh. Mean, my, my okay. family calls me. Okay, so uh, are you talking to a, a stranger, uh, a friend, a family member? Uh, we'll say stranger because that's what okay. I do mostly. Cool. Josh, you know, I, I see this man. I, I see the office and, uh, you know, I, I see the overall plan, what you guys are doing. I just I just don't think this is for me. Okay, cool. Uh, so let me ask, outside of not thinking this is for you, is there any other reason you wouldn't want to move forward? Uh, uh, yeah, I just don't think this is my cup of tea. Okay. Sorry. And... Um, what makes you feel it's not for you? Um, sales. I don't think, you know, I don't think I'm aware for sales. You know, I come from the military, you know, I'm, I'm more of a hands-on type of guy. Okay. And, and what is it about sales that you feel like kind of deters you from it? You know, just, you know, talking to people and just overall rejection, people telling you no, you know, come from the military, you know, okay. we don't get told no. Okay. And um, I'm just curious. I, I know you were saying that you want to make a lot of money outside of this. What, what plan do you have in place? Huh. Interesting. Um, uh, since I just got in the military, I probably take advantage of my uh, you know, post 9-11 uh, GI Bill and uh, probably go to my VA and see if I can get a disability rating so they can send me another two, three thousand dollars extra a month. Okay, two, three thousand. And then, um, you know, five, ten years down the road, inflation goes up, that two thousand becomes five hundred. Well, the thousand. military, they, they scale you up. It, it, okay. it, it, it okay. ratchets up. Now, is inflation. that going to give you a comfortable life or the life you're, you're looking for, the life of your dreams? Um, comfortable life, I mean. Are you okay with that? Or are you actually trying to like- Josh, by the way, time out, he's good. Okay. Um, I never thought about it. So if I could provide an opportunity for you to learn something like this, build some new skill sets and teach you the ropes on how to make this seem easy for you, would you be open to give it an opportunity so you can make the money and, and reach your dream? Gr by the way, great question. I'd pause right there, but but insert that pain a little bit further. Can, can I, can I please, please show me okay. so, so great. So that's something that you want, right? Yeah. So how are you doing it? Uh, right now, I honestly, I, I don't have a way. Is that what you want? Did you want a comfortable life? Do you want a great life? No, I want a great life. I mean, how bad? I mean, I think about it every night. What is a great life to you? Define it for me. Not having to work for somebody else, being able to do, you know, determine my time, my value. Based on what you're currently doing right now, the military ratcheting up, telling you what they pay in terms of a job. How confident are you on that current plan that you'll be able to live that comfortable or great life? Uh, I think I'll be a little better than comfortable, but great, I'm, I'm not too confident. What's the time frame you're looking at? Uh, three to five years, maybe. Gotcha, okay. So listen, I'm not so sure if this is the time frame you want, mm -hmm. but I know our guys in our office in 12 to 18 months, they're making 50,000, 100,000, 150,000 dollars in 12 to 18 months. Oh, wow. Without having to wait for a college degree or somebody to say you're worthy of this salary. Okay. Now, do you want to be in control of your income? Or do you want somebody telling you what you're worth? I want to be in control. Are you sure? Yeah. And on a scale of one to 10, I mean, how serious is that? Like 10 I mean, being, the, I value me versus I, I have somebody else value me. I would say an eight. Okay. Why not nine? So you, st you still want somebody to value you. You still want somebody, which is right, which is fine. You want somebody to recognize that you're valuable. I, I think it's more of a, a fear thing. Like I mentioned before, you know, a little worried about talking to others and, and that kind of thing. So I think it's, that's the only thing that keeps me from the nine. I, I'm, I'm just curious. Um, tell me something you love doing. Tell me a movie that you love seeing. Tell me about a restaurant uh, that you love eating at. I, I love martial arts movies. So at a, you ever heard of Ip Man? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> that's my, of course. That's one of my favorites. I'm a Bruce Lee guy though. Yeah. Ah! Enter the Dragon. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I love, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I'll just pause real quick. Notice how your whole physiology just changed because you found something that you love to do. Yeah. You smiled. You, 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 you even yeah, got yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Listen, it's all about understanding what we do. It, it's, it's the framing of not just insurance and sales is that when you understand what we do, that what we do is insurance and financial service, but who we are is completely different. Okay. We're a leadership development company helping people realize the greatest potential they have inside of them. And your job is to bring that out of them. When I talk about leadership and leadership development, the vision of helping America, and think about where America is today. America today is, is, is what? Overmothered and underfathered. How mm -hmm. many men just like you do we need more in America to stand up, stand out, to be a greater example for our sons and daughters? Yeah. How, how many more people just like you do we need to go out there and say, listen, man, I'm creating a benefit for our community. I'm just not a consumer of our community. We need more. A yeah. Lot more. And by the way, you can sell for any other insurance company and sell for somebody else. But what I see in you is a man that is wired the way he loves his wife, the way he's wired to his family. And to see your children be inspired by what you do. I mean, you, you got kids, right? When you see them graduating, you're probably going to flip out, right? Yeah. That's course. my, that's my baby, course. right? Yeah. What about your kids doing that to you? I never thought about that. Mm. How much more of an example do you want to set for your kids? Like, listen, I want you, mijo, 
to go out there and, and excel because mm -hmm. Papi and Mami, we're going out and doing the same thing too as well. Because mm -hmm. you're setting an example. Would you, would you like to see this type of win-win type of situation happen, this dynamic happening in your family? Absolutely. That's his conversation, brother. Okay. That's his conversation. You just thought it was just insurance and, and selling financial products. That's wow. what we do. Okay. But who we are is completely different. Does okay. that make sense? I might be able to get over who, what we do to become who we are. For sure. My man. There you go. There you go. That's it. So, so guys, my shift was where? Not comparing apples to apples. My shift was the higher law. Because I feel that way about the vision and the mission of our crusade. I see everyday people in our office changing their lives. I see a guy like Patrick but David sell this company for nearly $300 million. He's going to change his life. And guess who's up next? Us. You. How many people in this office do you need to see? 100,000, 200,000? What, what did, what did, uh, what did he just say? If you don't make $200,000 in this office, park across the street. Isn't that what he just said? Yeah. For those of you making $200,000, you can park in front. And how many people are parking in front? A lot. And you know, two years ago, three years ago, a bunch of junkers in that parking lot. Hyundai's and Toyotas. <laughs> and, and the bottom of the chair, just dragging. <laughs> People can hear your engine coming from Midway Road coming into the office. Ah, 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 that's, that's Matt. That's, that's him coming down the street. So wh where do I go? Now, for some of y'all, it's corny. For, for example, this is evangelizing a message. This is you selling in intangible, which is different than selling a car, selling a cell phone, selling shoes, selling anything retail. You're selling an intangible. So how do you make it intangible tangible? Create that vision. How do you create something that's intangible, something that I, I, I want to grab it now? The way, it, it's two things. Number one, you talk about their pain. And by the way, pain and finance is different than physical pain. For example, you broke, you broke your leg, right? What happens if you broke your leg? Right away, you're going to call what? Doctor. Call the doctor. I'm going to, uh, going to ER. Are you worried about the doctor putting the wrong cast from the wrong medical company on your leg? Put the damn cast on and shoot whatever you mean. I need to relieve the pain. Are you asking for the full description? Hey, what do you put in my body? <laughs> because that moment, it became a very tangible moment to relieve you from pain. So the thing with financial pain is unless you, you rip it out of them and show them their heartbeat, they never see their financial pain. Why? Financial pain can be hidden for generations. How does it make you, so another way to overcome, Josh, your father. Yes. Um, I, I'm just kidding. Not to say that I'm trying to sell you on doing this, but would you like to be financially free and be a millionaire one day? Of course. Why of course? Because I want my, my kids to be able to do whatever it is that they want to do with their so lives. So you equate being a millionaire to freedom for your family. Yes. You see, you see that, that, I just made it what? Tangible. A tangible thing, an intangible thing, a very tangible thing. Because like, like most people say, I'd never be a millionaire. But he just said what? I want to make sure my kids. Okay, so I'm going back. So you want to make sure your kids, kids have, have you added up the things that education, the business they want to start, the Man. wedding you want to have? Uh, I haven't done all of the, the adding up. I just know I need to make at least a uh, quarter mil per child. Like that's, that's kind of- Absolutely. A quarter mil per child to do what? To be able to make sure they can go to whatever college they want, private schooling, uh, sports, everything. Dude, I agree. Like what about you and your wife? Uh, yeah, well, we want to travel the world. Um, sure. She has a modeling career she wants to build up, so I want to be able to help her with that. So, so you actually have you actually done the, the line items, how much money and, and uh, an income that you need and assets that you need to actually make that a reality? No, I haven't. Guess what we're going to be doing here? We're going to be doing that. That. Oh, okay. We're doing that. So nobody in your entire life ever broken it down for you? No. So I just created a what? An intangible, a tangible thing. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do through our fast start process, when we get you on board, we're going to find out exactly what you need to do in terms of accomplishing those, the financial resources they need to accomplish those things. And then the question you got to ask yourself, how much time, energy, and effort am I willing to actually make this a reality? Mm -hmm. Do I want to do this in 12 months? Do I want to do this in 14 months? Do I want to do this in four years, three years, six years? It's, it's completely up to you. Me just saying that, what do you want to do? I'm looking at a 12 month plan. 12 month plan. Outside of this conversation, how else are you getting there? Um, I have my cousin, he, he's on like the financial advisor side, so he gives me some tips here and there, but outside of that, I don't really have anything going on. So he's a financial advisor in, term, in terms of investments. Yes. If you put 50 bucks here, 100 bucks here. So that is called passive investing, mm -hmm. right? So in other words, you hope that whatever you put your money into grows. Right. This is active investing. Who, who, who are you actively investing in? 
actively, it's just myself. Right exactly. Now. Do you trust you or you trust the passive guy? I trust me. So in other words, if I showed you a formula here and how to make 5,000, 10,000 by doing these activities, and you get this accomplished, you're going to get a direct deposit for five to $10,000 on top of your current job and current income. Okay. Okay. Right. If I show you how to do this, you're going to end up fifty, $20,000 in income. So you see this progression in qualifying for these schools and these mastermind groups shows you how to inc increase your skill set. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you know how to apply these things in the field. So when you've had, when you have, when you got clients, we got potential people that you want to onboard in terms of uh, expanding your reach and network and bandwidth of your business. Guess what? Guess what will happen to the revenue of your business? You'll expand, grow into and multiply. Okay. Is that something that you want? Yeah, that, that sounds good. This is what we're doing here. That's it. You, you just, you're just filling, you're just filling in. You're just filling in the blanks. Does that make sense? Yeah. Question. Can you say that part again about financial advisors and growth? Yeah. So if you put your money, for example, if you put your money in a financial advisor, you're hoping whatever they're putting their money in will grow. That's that's passive investing. You have no active involvement in that. So you're hoping somebody on Wall Street's taking your money and in addition with everybody else, and they're growing it and earning a rate of return. Versus active investing, you're involved. Whether you're involved in insurance, whether you're involved in real estate, whether you're involved in e-com, whether you're involved in, in, in construction, you're the active investor in your endeavor. You're the one pushing the buttons. You're the one that determines, am I going to be working hard today or not working hard today? Do you know that about the guy in Wall Street? You don't know about that guy in Wall Street. So who do you trust more? The guy in Wall Street that you have no relation with, you don't even know their name, versus you. You see yourself every day. You, you know your work habits every day. You know your, your disciplines. Are you willing to invest more in you or, or somebody else? Now, if you don't want to invest in you, then go the passive route. But if you want to have a direct involvement about how your time and energy and effort is going to be spent here and, and the return you're going to get, this, this is X, Y, Z, what you need to do. So guess what? Our, again, our sale is what? An intangible becoming tangible. tangible. Mm -hmm. Your job is to show people, here's what you're currently doing, but this is what you want. Is what you're doing going to get you to what you want? If not, then let me offer you this as a potential solution. But I'm only going to offer it to you if you're willing to at least be open to it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, 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 and by the way, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't gotten to the recording. I'll, I'll wrap up with this. I can sit down now. Yeah, you can sit. Make some noise for Josh. Yes. Good job. Because <laughs> all these lead to what? The interview. Right? Whether to enroll or not to enroll. Will I get licensed or not licensed? Okay? And so here's, here's some key points that I want to know whether or not they're a good candidate for me. Number one, I need to know their pain or dissatisfaction. Back shin. Okay? I need to know that. If I don't know their pain or dissatisfaction, I'm spinning wheels. The second one, that they have money. That they're willing to invest into changing their lives. That's why we want you to have on your top 25 list people that have a current job or business. Why? Because eventually you're going to need money for licensing. Eventually you're going to need money for big events. And you don't want them saying, I can't go, I can't get licensed because I ain't got no money. Okay? Um, other area here too as well. Okay? They, they got to have some form of uh, money. For me, I like them between 25 and 45 years old. I say that tongue-in-cheek because when I came into this business, I was 23. I say that tongue-in-cheek because some of the biggest uh, uh, um, ballers we have here in the business are 50 years old. I'm just saying this as a general, 80% of your success are going to come from or from this age group. Why? Think about it when you're 18, 20, 21 years old. Did you know everything? No. Of, of course you did. <laughs> now you're saying that, but think about it. You were 18, 19, 20. Many of us here, me guilty of it, thought we were on top of the world. You couldn't tell us nothing until what? Life here, here's your ass. <laughs> so it's the King James Version. <laughs> here you go. Don't, you forgot the other cheek. <laughs> put them both, put them both on. Okay, now go through life. Because you just, you just got your ass whooped between 18 and 25, thinking that way. Or you might have a kid. That's what happened to me. I got my ass handed to me. I had a kid, 22, 23 years old. I had to get very serious very quickly. I said it's tongue-in-cheek because many people coming in at 50, they kick, they kick tail over here. 
What I'm just saying is a sweet spot. 80% of the people that you will prosper are between 25 and 45. And here's why. Let's say you find somebody like a Josh. Right? You come in here, his family, beautiful wife. And they see no Josh making $100,000, $200,000 a year. And he wasn't doing that before. What's the probability of him sticking around in front of long term because now he's making $200,000, $300,000, $500,000 a year? High or low? High. Because I've showed them what this relationship can financially mean for their family and their children. Versus him saying, you know what, screw Matt, screw PHP, let me find something else. What is he severing? He's severing relationships and the years that you put here. Sad enough. So that makes think, people think twice. Now, if somebody's in their 60s, 60s old, they're going to say, yeah, you know what, I got my retirement portfolio anyway. Cool. You're going to do that? I'm going to go back to college. But usually people in 25, 45, okay, I just got married, I have a kid, I just got to divorce. Some area of seriousness is happening in most people's lives between 25 and 40. Thaddeus, how old are you? Yeah, bingo. Val? Yeah, see, 27, 26. They're, right? They're in, that, they're in that age group. Comes in like gangbusters. I don't even have to remind them to come to the BOM. They're like, here, ready to go. Coachable, excited, squared away, looking good. Always squared, always look, coming here looking sharp. Great attitude, both of them. Willing to learn. Why? Because life has a funny way of humbling us all. And you usually get humbled by 25. <laughs> right? And then, and then the folks that are in the 40, 45, uh, 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 where is it? My man, how, how are you, big dog? You're going by Tanaxel t- today, right? I'm 51. He's 51. So, he, so he's, out, he's outside of this group, right? But his energy, his aura is not 51. We're like, we're like 25. <laughs> and, and, and his son's right here too as well. <laughs> that's it, right? The whole thing about age is just a number. That's that's true. Back to attitude. <laughs>